my guest this morning is Scott, who is the Chief Information Officer of GitHub, and he's also one of the co-founders, which means that he's actually been there for the full seven-year lifetime of yes. GitHub. Yes, yes. And during that time, GitHub has gone from four or five people working in cafes to with your latest funding round of $250 mil $250 million, $250 million yeah. to a valuation of about $2 billion. Yes. Um, so it's been quite a journey, I imagine. Yeah, uh, we're 380 employees now, uh, probably most of whom still work out of cafes uh, since we're, we're largely distributed. So, But around the world? Around the world, yeah. C cafes everywhere, not just cafes in San Francisco. All right, so basically you're taking over Starbucks all over the world. Yes. <laughs> one city at a time. Um, so how have GitHub's ambitions changed over that period? Yeah, well, <clears throat> GitHub's focus in the early days was uh, open source hosting. That was what we all did. That was what we needed at the time. Um, and when we were building GitHub in the early days, it was for a side project so that we could host our open source code for the other stuff that we were working on. Um, and so we found there was just so much demand for it. Um, and at the same time, the world was switching from subversion to Git uh, very, very slowly. That was kind of how I got involved in GitHub in the first place was I wrote a book on Git and kind of met everybody that way. Um, but so we, we've sort of seen this sea change. But at the beginning, we were focused on this open source hosting thing. Um, we found a lot of people were asking us, can I pay you to do this privately? And so we were like, I guess you could. Um, and so we you know, added a billing system. And that was kind of when the company got started for real. And now, um, and so we always just kind of built stuff for ourselves. It took us a long time. Um, until because you yourself were a Ruby developer, right? Yeah, we're, yeah, I'm a Ruby developer. We were all open source programmers. Um, but the, the main focus of the company, I think, has shifted to larger organizations. It has always sort of been building tools for us. So when you know, we started, it was great for three or four people, teams. Um, when we were about a hundred, yeah. Basically. When we were about a hundred people, it was great for teams of like a hundred people. Um, and now, you know, we're seeing all of these enterprises come to us and say, you know, we want to do open source internally. We want to have an open source culture within, you know, Yahoo or within SAP or whatever. Um, and so we, that's not, we're not that size. So we've found ourselves having to change our focus to talk to our customers and figure out something that's not us, like. Um, so that these larger companies can create open source cultures internally. And you said it's not even like what we think of as tech companies, but you have companies like Walmart who have GitHub yeah. repositories now. Yeah, there was, um, there was a, a reporter who, who said that every, every company will be a software company. Um, and we, we sort of repeat that in GitHub a lot. Um, so we, we think that you know, we have customers like John Deere, um, customers like Walmart, um, you know, people making tractors, people doing big box stores um, that are becoming more and more fundamentally software companies. Um, uh, and, and so that, that's what we're sort of fundamentally trying to do is create good tools for software developers because we feel like eventually every, uh, every company will become a software company to some degree. So developers, whether they're at a corporate or a startup. Yeah or anything in between? Yeah, uh, almost everybody. I mean, we're seeing tons of people taking software development courses, programming courses, intro to programming courses, because there's so much that you can do with it now um, that it's not just software developers that are writing software. Um, you know, it's, it's people doing finance. It's people in, in all sorts of different areas that find being able to automate stuff uh, highly useful for what they do. So since we're on the enterprise stage, let's talk a little bit more about your corporate customers. Sure. So how did you have to change what you offer and how you work to be able to deal with companies like Walmart? Yeah, well, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. <clears throat> and we're actually seeing this as well, getting to the, the size of you know, 250, 300, 350 employees. Um, some things like single sign-on um, that, that uh, you know, we use Okta for single sign-on. Uh, when we were 50 people, that was not something that was a huge problem for us. Um, and now we're actually experiencing that. But we implemented single sign-on because we were seeing that from our enterprise customers. And our initial response was like, why would you want to do that? Just every, have everybody create a thing until we sort of went on site and saw how difficult it is to, you know, there, there are tons of problems with having teams of thousands of developers that, that uh, you know, we just never saw when we were working with open source uh, groups or, or with smaller programming teams. And you also, I think, have a 
quite large support team now, which is partly because of those larger customers, right? Because right. you didn't have that for open source projects. Yeah, I mean, we have we've we've always had uh, we've always scaled support with the the size of our, our of our customer base, which yes. is now 11 million uh, people on the on the dot com product, um, and tens of thousands on the enterprise on the on site product as well. Uh, but we've been we've been getting different types of support needs. So having people that are uh, 24 hours support, phone support. Um, there are enterprise customers that really want to make sure that they're taken care of. Um, and it's a different type of support to, to sort of uh, staff up for that, that took us a while to figure out how to do that effectively. But now we have um, sort of dedicated support, like a, a person that is available all of the time for, for a single company, or somebody that will go on site and help implement solutions. Because I suppose these were the type of companies that were used to having service level agreements with yeah. 99.39s type, you know, Ex stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure that was quite a something to adapt to. Yeah. Um, so there was some talk in the last couple of years, uh, inside and outside GitHub, about moving, well, not moving, but making, uh, bringing GitHub beyond code and to be GitHub for everyone. But it sounds like your thinking has changed slightly. On that, and now you're you're going to focus on your core market and people who work with them. Yeah, well, I mean, it's 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 interesting because I think Git specifically and GitHub have brought about this change in how people like to collaborate. Um, so having a lot of people working on the same thing, uh, you know, I think a way of collaboration like the Wikipedia model has become very difficult because it takes so much maintenance. Um, whereas the GitHub model of you know, copy something, make a change, submit a, a pull request to say, here are the changes that I would like you to merge in, and then the maintainer can look at that and decide whether they want to merge it or not, um, is a really powerful collaboration model that people want to use for lots of stuff. Like, lawyers see, you know, if you've ever sent red lines back and forth, Word documents, you know, email uh, over email, it's a horrible, horrible process. Um, and so lots of people, you know, see how software developers are collaborating in this great way and want to do it as well. Um, and we have talked a lot about you know doing GitHub for lawyers or GitHub for CAD or GitHub for you know whatever it, it, pretty much any collaborative collaborative process um, that sucks right now, which is pretty much every collaborative process yes. um, except for software development to some degree. Um, I think that that we do that fairly well, um, but it's you know it's very difficult to fit. We're not lawyers. We're not uh, you know CAD designers. Um, and Although so I feel you did like say we, your own legal team at GitHub does make comments and source code. Our legal team uses GitHub heavily. Um, they use GitHub issues, they get, they get mentioned on pull requests, they get brought into stuff to, you know, our software developers can talk to lawyers about any of the changes that they make. Um, everybody at GitHub actually uses GitHub fairly extensively. Um, so there are, you know, project managers, lawyers, people can use GitHub, um, but we've been focusing mostly on how do these, how do people that aren't software developers work with software developers to okay. make better software, as opposed to making a whole separate product for lawyers. Um, we have a lot of integrations. What we've been doing is trying to focus on our core customers, on software developers, um, and letting people use our, our extensive API um, and in, to create integrations so that if they want to use our back end to help facilitate that collaboration process and have a different user interface for it, then they can do it and we want to support them and we would like to help them build that business. Um, but we would rather have somebody that's focused on lawyers rather than you know, us sort of doing lawyers too. Right? Because you're not a domain expert. Yeah, that's not, that's not what, we, what we do. But you have talked about uh, people like product managers or designers who actually have to work quite closely with developers right. and maybe even to understand or be able to at least understand the process that developers use. Right. Um, so what kind of features do you offer for them or what's the plan to kind of support them further in future? Yeah, so uh, we've been working on you know, improving markdown support, making it easier to write sort of WYSIWYG style as opposed to actually having to write the markup uh, in there. Um, you know, drag and drop for images, for other types of file att attachments, um, any way to, to sort of share information that's not just source code. Yes. Um, mostly centered around sort of the issues and the wikis that, that, that we provide. Um, but also just the notification system, just being able to mention other people is a hugely powerful way of getting other people involved, right? If you have single sign-on, if you have everybody in the company on GitHub, um, and you have a large software development team, you know, all of the, if you are, you know, if our theory is correct, if every company will become more and more a software company, then software becomes more important inside every company. And so getting everybody else in the company involved and knowing what is coming out or what you're working on or how those features are evolving 
um, whether it's a lawyer or product manager or executive or whoever, um, is highly advantageous to the entire company. So, so having more of the kind of transparency that you have in exactly. an open source project. Exactly. More transparency. So I mean, and and that's that's even true across software development teams. If you have you know some huge company with thousands and thousands of developers, you're going to have. It's not just going to be 10,000 people on one project. It'll be you know it, hundreds of teams ranging from a couple of people to hundreds of people to thousands of people maybe. Um, but I think the, the older model, especially in enterprise, is to have these be sort of walled gardens, have a, a whole bunch of separate teams that don't really cross-communicate or know what each other is doing. Um, and like I said at the beginning, a lot of companies are trying to move towards having sort of an internal open source culture of you see what everybody's doing, you can help each other, you can work on libraries uh, you know, with other teams. Um, as opposed to it's us versus them or just not seeing what anybody else is doing at all. So it sounds like at a higher level beyond the technicalities of doing things like merges of code, you're talking about an asynchronous collaboration too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, it's also highly important for us to have a great asynchronous collaboration across teams. And that <clears throat> because, so we use chat and we use GitHub for pretty much everything in the company because over 60% of our, of our company works remotely. So we have, you know, we only have 380 employees, but we have people in 35 states in the United States and probably 20 countries across the world uh, <clears throat> and, and in almost every time zone. So um, having some way of being able to work on something, you know, not get bothered, not have to have real sort of blocking time with people um, and be able to collaborate across teams, across departments, be able to mention people, bring people into conversations they need to be involved in um, is hugely important to us. And I think it will become increasingly important as, uh, as well, A, a as you have larger teams where there's no, there's no way to have everybody in the same room yes. uh, all the time. But, but as companies start to realize that working from home, that, that having flexible schedules is highly important um, and highly valuable to, to, to companies. And maybe essential if they want to hire the best people. Exactly, yeah. Um, one issue, though, with people like, let's say, designers working with GitHub is the actual document formats that you support. Because yeah. code is still mainly like structured text. Yeah. Whereas designers are working with different types of digital artifacts. I know you have some features to support things like 3D models, for example. So <laughs> can you tell me a bit more about that? Sure, yeah. We have uh, STL rendering. We have a rendering team that works on trying to render all sorts of stuff. Um, PDFs, images, fonts, uh, 3D models. Um, you know, STL files are what you use to do 3D printing, so we get a, a lot of those. Um, there's a, a great, one of my favorite open source projects on GitHub right now is a 3D stethoscope, um, like open source stethoscope that works as well as sort of the gold standard stethoscopes out there. And they have STL files where you can print your own, buy some tubing and create a stethoscope. And, and uh, so it's been great for providing low cost stethoscopes around the world. Um, but people can find that, you know, change the model, send a pull request, improve the stethoscopes. Um, and, and you see that in all sorts of, of different uh, builder, builder projects, right, which I think that the 3D model rendering has really helped because you can see people want to share their models and, and be able to visualize them and then want to, if you make an improvement, um, to, to, to be able to send the model over and not have to open it up in something else. You can sort of see it in 3D on, on, the, GitHub, on the GitHub file. It, it's difficult, though, because um, what is important in collaboration is being able to merge stuff, right? If you have yes. a lot of people working on the same thing, you don't just want to be able to see what does this source code look like, or what does this model look like, or what does this PDF look like, but what is the difference? But if you make a change, what is the difference between what you did, or what I had, and what you've done, so I can tell whether it's better or whether I want to include it, um, or some sort of help to actually merge those together, right? If you have multiple changes to the 3D steth stethoscope, to be able to pull them all in, as opposed to having to choose one and then make everybody else redo their stuff. So um, in software, in structured text, it's relatively easy to do algorithmically with, with 3D models or with fonts or you know, with art. Uh, it's incredibly difficult to do that. Yeah, so if you can at some stage in the future merge two different designs and take the best of both of them, that would yeah. be an amazing Yeah, I mean, uh, if you have thing. two people take a PSD or something and make two changes to it simultaneously, the, I mean, it's even difficult to do manually to, yes. to, to merge those changes, right? Okay, so that's all the time we have. So thank you very much, everyone. And thank you to Scott. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah.